Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and recently I stated that buoyancy has nothing to do with the density of an object. Now when people hear that, their initial thought might be, well, hold on, if you have an object that is denser than water and put that in water, then it'll sink. If you have an object that is lighter than water and put that in water, then it will float. So how can the density of the object have nothing to do with buoyancy? Now to answer that question, we're going to need to talk about force and the buoyant force. I know that some people don't like me calling buoyancy a force, but I mean, we can treat it like a force here. And also, whilst we're at it, we're going to debunk the claim of you don't need buoyancy, you only need relative density disequilibrium to explain why some objects float and other objects sink. And you know what that means? It means that this is an egg. Although, my egg does appear to have cracked quite a bit. Of course, I should probably mention that this is a shirt that you can actually buy from my Teespring. There'll be a link in the description. So if you want to support me and you want a shirt that says this is an egg, you can do that. Or you could get it as a mug. I've actually found it to be far funnier than you'd initially think, but that's a subject for a different video that'll probably be ages away. So keep an eye out for that. So with that ad break out of the way, was it an ad break? I don't know, 10 out of 10 either way. Let's talk about what the density of an object actually tells us in relation to whether that object floats and sinks. So as we all know, if we put an object that isn't as dense as water into water, then that object will float. But that's about the extent to which the density of the object is useful here, because you can put an object that is denser than water into water and have it float. For a time, that was called the Titanic. In fact, I can make an object float and without changing its density, make that same object sink. I'll show you. So here I have this plate and when I just put it on top of the water, it floats. However, when I put it in at an angle, it just sinks to the bottom. You see, all I've done here is I've just changed the way that I've put the plate into the water. That does not change its density, at least I don't think it does. I should also point out that this does debunk relative density disequilibrium because the plate is denser than both the water below it and the air above it. So if relative density disequilibrium was a thing, then it should just sink. So the question that a lot of people will have and the question that I will attempt to answer is if the density of the object has nothing to do with buoyancy, then what does? So there are three parts to buoyancy. And the first part is rather simple, and that is gravity. So the reason why gravity plays a role is because it's pulling everything towards the center of the Earth. It's pulling the fluid towards the center of the Earth, and it's pulling the object towards the center of the Earth. So when you place an object in a fluid, that object will create a force on that fluid, and that force will be proportional to its mass. Now the reason why this force is proportional to its mass is because, well, the force of gravity is proportional to mass. And I know that some people will say, well, gravity isn't actually a force. For this video, just treat it as if it is a force. Now the important thing to acknowledge here is that fluids have mass and are thus affected by gravity, despite Flat Earthers not understanding that. So this means that, much like the object, Every part of a fluid is exerting force on the fluid below it. This is also why in the oceans, for example, pressure increases with depth. So that is the first part, gravity. All right, the next part is something that initially might appear to go against what I've been saying this entire video, but trust me, it doesn't. And I'm going to let this is an egg himself give a demonstration. This is an egg. All we need to do is pour some of this in, Hey, what do you know? The egg's immediately moved. So the second part is density, but not the density of the object, it's the density of the fluid. This is why I've been very careful to make sure that I've been saying the density of the object because, I mean, yeah, density plays a role, just not the density of the object. And obviously this makes sense because the denser the fluid, the more force it's going to exert as it's pulled down by gravity. And the third and final thing, which is probably the most important, is the displaced volume of fluid. Now there is something that I do have to mention here because I have seen some sites say that the volume of the object is the third part. But that is only for a completely submerged object because, you know, the volume of displaced fluid will be the same as the volume of the object if the object is completely submerged. 
The volume of the object only covers when it's submerged, however the volume of displaced fluid basically just covers everything, including floating objects. So to put everything together and to kind of recap, we have a force being exerted on the fluid by the object and that force is proportional to the mass of the object seeing as this force is caused by gravity. And this force will displace some of the fluid. Now every part of the fluid will exert a force on the fluid that is below it. This force again will be proportional to mass due to gravity. Now due to the way that fluids work, some of this force will end up exerting itself on the object that is displacing the fluid. The more that the object displaces this fluid, then the more force will be applied to the object to counteract that. Now there are some bits that are a little bit more difficult to explain, such as the fact that you've got a downwards force, gravity, causing a force that pushes objects upwards. Although I think the easiest way to explain it is if you've got a cup of water, this doesn't have any more water in it, but the water on top is kept on top by the water below it exerting a force in the opposite direction of gravity. Same kind of thing is happening with buoyancy except it's all the fluid that is being displaced that is adding to that upwards force. I hope I have explained the finer details of that well enough so that everyone can understand. If not, I'm sorry, but I did try. This is an egg. Now, some people will probably hear all that and go, yeah, I kind of get what you're getting at, but wouldn't the density of the object still play a role? Let's say that you have two objects, same mass, different density, and then you put them in, let's say, water. The buoyant force applied to the object with less density will be greater than the buoyant force applied to the object with more density. Now, whilst it might seem like you're changing the density, what you're actually changing there if you're keeping the mass the same is you're changing the volume of the object. Now if you change the volume of the object, this is assuming that the object is completely submerged, you are going to change the amount of fluid it displaces. Now people might say, well what if we change the density but instead of keeping the mass the same, we keep the volume the same. Wouldn't there be a greater buoyant force applied to the object with a lower density? To which I say, as long as the object is completely submerged, no, the buoyant force will remain exactly the same. Because you see, the object with greater density will have more mass and thus be affected by gravity more. And this means to push it in the opposite direction of gravity, you would need more force to counteract that force of gravity. So this means the more mass an object has, the greater the buoyant force needed to act upon that object to keep it afloat. Now I hope all of that explains why the density of the object has nothing to do with the buoyant force that is acting upon it. And I also hope it explains why I can sit a plate on top of water despite it being denser than the water, because it's now displacing more fluid than if I were to put it in at an angle. But anyway, leave a like and subscribe if you like this video, and go check out this and hopefully buy a t-shirt or a mug. I've been intending to advertise these in a video for a while now, but haven't found a topic to talk about to advertise them. Or you could support me on Patreon, because that's an option. And hey, if you give me $20 or more a month, you could be just like Hugh Jars, MC Nutkin, Shaggy, Wolfie, Mori, Greymo Ghost, Kid Vicious, and Sarcha Campbell, who I give shoutouts to at the end of videos. But with that, I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching. This is an egg. This is an egg.